Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Christopher Hart moves closer to being NTSB chairman. Senator Jim Inhofe introduces the second Pilot's Bill of Rights. And the second Bell Jet Ranger X takes flight. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's episode, our newsroom got a late-breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, we got a bit of mixed news this morning. Some good stuff and, well, some not-so-good stuff, to say the least. Bombardier CS-300, though, has made its first flight in what appears to be about a five-hour test flight that started about 11 a.m. this morning out of Mirabel, Quebec, Canada. The CS-300 is an airliner currently positioned to compete with some of Boeing's and Airbus entry-level aircraft. Took off about 11 a.m. local time. The flight had originally been planned for Thursday, but unfortunately had been delayed by weather. The CS-300 is designed to seat 130 to 160 passengers, making it Bombardier's largest aircraft to date. It's reported that Bombardier has 180 firm orders for the CS-300, compared to just 63 for the smaller CS-100. The first of the smaller aircraft was supposed to have been delivered to its launch customer late last year, but now that date's expected to be sometime later this year, with entry into service for the CS-300 sometime in 2016. While development costs for the C-Series airplanes has far exceeded initial projections and an uncontained engine failure on the CS-100 airplanes last May further delayed the program, the CS-300 is expected to be the most popular aircraft that they're going to be able to field for some time to come. In other news, we've received some really disturbing news for all of us who grew up dreaming of space and space travel and flights to far distant planets. Well, one of the icons of that era, Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock to all of us, passed away this morning at the age of 83 due to heart failure. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the program, how many times I've watched Mr. Spock do his thing, and how many times in one form or another I've heard live long and prosper. But the fact of reality is, well, we may all live long and prosper to a certain extent, but fate takes us all. And on behalf of Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, We give them all our love and our respect and thanks for many, many years of looking into the future. For Aero News, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. The U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation approved Christopher Hart as chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board on February 26th, sending the nomination to the full Senate. Hart originally served with the NTSB from 1990 to 1993. His most recent term with the NTSB started in August 2009, and since then he's been appointed the vice chairman three times and has been currently serving in that position. He became the acting chairman in April 2014 when Deborah Hurstman left the post. The White House initially had nominated Hart to the post of chairman last year, but the 113th Congress failed to act before it was adjourned in December. After the break, Bell advances testing of their Model 505. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The second flight test vehicle in Bell's 505 Jet Ranger X program has been flown for the first time. The Bell 505's Flight Test Vehicle 1 completed its first flight test in November of last year, and the program has quickly progressed, performing additional flight tests and numerous practice auto rotations. The Bell 505 program manager, David Smith, said, quote, 
This puts us one step closer to certification and production. The aircraft performed incredibly well, successfully demonstrating a low traffic speed, traffic pattern at 60 knots, end quote. The Bell 505 was designed based on extensive input provided by a customer advisory council. Bell Helicopter unveiled the Jet Ranger X at Heli Expo 2014 in February and has already received more than 300 letters of intent for the new model. Oklahoma Senator Jim Inhofe has introduced S-571, the Pilot's Bill of Rights too, to address numerous important issues including expanding the third-class medical exemption for recreational pilots and broadening the protections provided in the original Pilot's Bill of Rights, which was authored by Inhofe and signed into law in 2012. Inhofe said in part, quote, The first Pilot's Bill of Rights was a victory for the aviation community and made possible by the support of pilots and industry leaders across the nation. Since being signed into law, more issues facing the general aviation community have surfaced. The Pilot's Bill of Rights, too, addresses these concerns and builds on the success of my previous legislation, end quote. Inhofe added that he was proud to work with great organizations like AOPA, EAA, and Gamma on this legislation, as well as have the strong bipartisan support of his colleagues in Congress. At EAA AirVenture last year, Inhofe hosted a public forum to solicit input for the legislation. He received over 400 comments through his website from the general aviation community, which were read and considered in crafting the final legislation. When we come back, Phoenix Heli Parts partners with True Blue Power. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Phoenix Heli Parts is partnering with True Blue Power to pursue a series supplemental type certificate for the installation of lithium ion batteries into many airframes. They're planning the first STC for the MD series helicopters in early 2016. AAR has agreed to sell its Tel Air Cargo Group to Transdime for a purchase price of $725 million in cash. The sale is expected to close in the fourth quarter, ending May 31, 2015, subject to regulatory approval. While proposed regulations for commercial UAS operators are going through the FAA machinery for approval, Six more commercial UAV exceptions have been granted. This brings the total number of exemptions to 34 out of over 420 requests. FlyersRights.org has filed a petition with the U.S. Department of Transportation demanding a cap on fees that the airlines charge for changing a flight. They claim, quote, Changing a flight can be downright exploitation, especially if you're flying internationally, end quote. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. 
a preliminary type certification board for Mooney's new two plays, M10T and M10J airplanes, was held at the Chino, California offices of Mooney International recently. The company is working towards a type certificate for the M10 series model, and the meeting included FAA personnel from across the United States. Mooney's Vice President of Engineering, Tony Parker, said, quote, The certification board meeting completes a major milestone for Mooney International's M10 series program. This initial meeting is the beginning of the process that will lead to FAA certification of the M10, end quote. Mooney made the M10 series announcement at Airshow China 2014 and says the pace of the M10 program has progressed quickly and company milestones have been met. Well, that's our program for Friday, February 27th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Join us in a growing roster of outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.